the clean fuel from this biogas unit in a small village in Karnataka, India, is a step towards saving our planet from an imminent catastrophe. Global warming. It is financed by corporate enterprises thousands of kilometers away in the advanced nations of the world. They are paying for their consumerist and pollution-intensive lifestyles by supporting clean technologies in developing nations. Keeping the overall pollution emissions into the atmosphere within reasonable limits. This effort provides an example of how ideas from the field of economics are addressing global environment and development challenges of the 21st century. Science and technology has changed our lives with economic progress and immense improvements in our standard of living. But all this has come at a cost. The higher levels of production and consumption are sustained through exploitation of natural resources and higher levels of energy consumption. A significant part of our energy needs are met by burning fossil fuels like coal, petrol and gas. But when we do that, polluting gases are emitted into the atmosphere. The Earth's natural atmosphere contains concentrations of so-called greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons and sulfur hexafluoride. These gases act like a blanket that keeps in some of the sun's warmth making life on Earth possible. But the blanket is getting thicker with polluting gas emissions. In the last three decades, emissions of carbon dioxide alone have increased by 50% from 4 billion metric tons, carbon equivalent to 6 billion metric tons. This is expected to touch 10 billion metric tons in the next two decades. As the blanket gets thicker, heat is trapped closer to the Earth's surface and temperature across the planet increases. Scientists predict an increase of anywhere between 1.4 to 5.8 degrees Celsius in this century. There is no question that we've seen a global warming of the surface temperature over the last hundred years. One of the questions is how much of that warming is natural and how much is it caused by human effects. I think this, most scientists would agree that there's a fair fraction of that is caused by human effects. And now we need to know what does that mean for the future? This global warming will have a catastrophic impact on the ecosystem and on human lives. Melting polar ice caps, sea level rise, droughts and floods and extreme weather events are the inevitable consequences of climate change affecting all countries, rich and poor. So what can be done to stop the process of global warming and climate change? One solution suggested by scientists is to cut back on usage of fossil fuels and switch over to renewable sources of energy like solar, wind or tidal energy which emit little or no greenhouse gases. Another solution is forestry. Forests act as carbon sinks or sequestration that absorb and store carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Forests, unfortunately, are also a source of emission when trees are felled or burnt in fires. Preventing further deforestation and undertaking new forestry activities could slow down the process of climate change, but pressures are pulling in the opposite direction. Straightforward as they may seem, scientific solutions without considering today's global economic and political context cannot be put into practice. When we look at who is responsible for global warming, confusion prevails. In per capita terms, it is definitely the advanced countries which must take responsibility for global warming. However, in terms of total emissions, countries like China and India cannot turn away from their contribution to the problem. 
How then can nations come together to avert the catastrophe? We pay for fuel, but do we pay for this? We derive benefits from consumption, but sometimes the price we pay for the goods we consume does not take into account their full social costs. These cost differentials are unaccounted for by markets. They are called externalities. When externalities exist, markets fail to bring about a socially optimal outcome, a case of market failure. How do we correct the market to include externalities? Almost a century ago, the economist Arthur Cecil Pigou suggested a solution. The government must impose a tax on users. This would increase private cost and bring it closer to social costs. But there are concerns about the Piguvian tax. What is the correct amount of tax that must be imposed? Neither too little nor too much. An alternative mechanism to internalize externalities into the market system was suggested by the economist Ronald Coase. Suppose each citizen is given a right to pollute but only up to 100 kg carbon equivalent of carbon dioxide emissions per day. Now the car owner exceeds his quota whereas this cyclist does not. When the car owner exceeds his quota he will have to buy rights to pollute from the cyclist. The price for these rights are determined by the market forces of demand and supply. A little help is still needed from the government to enforce the quotas on the right to pollute at a reasonable cost. If these costs, called transaction costs, for enforcing property rights are excessive, then the market would fail to internalize the externality. Coase's theory has been applied to tackle this complex issue of global warming and climate change by enabling a mutually beneficial exchange between the industrialized countries and the developing world. What the industrialized countries said was, look, for us it's extremely expensive, quite apart from being politically very, very difficult, to make emission cuts at home. And so a cost per ton of emission reduction would certainly come to 100 euros or whatever it is. So what they said was that, look, instead of us doing everything, even though we've accepted commitments, it is clear that a ton reduced in India is the same as a ton reduced in Europe in terms of the global effect. So why can't we finance emission reductions in developing countries, which will also give developing countries the opportunity of already now having some new technologies in place, which in the long run all of us are going to have to have in place and also we get cheaper um, emission reductions which we can use to meet our Kyoto targets. An application of economic theory which may help alleviate one of the most challenging issues facing our world. <laughs>